overall the nacelles are definitely detachable however the more you do that the more wear and tear the copper tape is going to get stressed with and the more likely you are to have a failure whether it's a failure you can recover from or not I don't know I have not run that test so that is something to keep in, in mind theoretically you can just layer another piece of copper tape over a broken frayed piece as long as the connections good however that is not necessarily going to be true every single time I don't think but it could very well be so turn into the saucer here's what we got red and green in the back with a white base at the tail so that is still to do on that end of the nacelles top bottom aft white got it back of the neck red at the base not at the upper sides the only time I ever saw the upper sides lit is when the saucer was detached so since that is not the case in this case I'm going to glue those pieces on with no modification no special lighting or nothing at all however putting some red LEDs and creating a box for them would be the thing to do. That does look like a really tight space though, so that might be kind of difficult. You know what? We'll take a look at it just to see. On the bottom of the saucer here, we've got six white spaces, six white lights. Sides, front, and then three around the base of the neck. And then it looks like if the neck is detached, that's what the top would look like. It's not in this case. Then the very bottom of the secondary hull, we've got a single red light and a single white light at the tail, which was previously mentioned up there. So two holes to drill on the secondary hull, six holes to drill up here, and a bunch to ignore don't know if I mentioned it in a previous video but theoretically what you could do is make the saucer detachable and just like there's copper pads right there you would essentially have copper pads between the saucer and the neck they'd have to be fully exposed so there's no getting away around that however with some probably a serious amount of really strong neodymium magnets maybe like five or even seven of them just sit here and then on the, the underneath there to make sure you've got a really strong hold because this is a really heavy saucer here you're dealing with in that case simply lifting the saucer off would turn the lights off because you'd be losing power and putting it back on that would light up so that would be kind of nifty I think there's all sorts of things you could do with that sort of technology. Ha ha. So, to drill or not to drill? It looks like the drill points are going to be right about at the key points. In that case, at the uh, cardinals. Then three more to drill down here. Where do they go? Right around the base of the neck. So, right here way back here and way back there okay I can see that happening so what I'm going to do is pull out my handy dandy Tamiya handy drill put on a 5 millimeter bit or a 0.5 millimeter bit and get to town so one consideration I really got is that fiber optics are thin but how thin are they it looks like I should have enough room if I stay uh, on the inside. There's even a little double window there I can drill through it looks like. So even though I don't include fiber optics in the uh, LED kit at this time, I get all my fiber optics from Paul at thefiberopticstore.com. He's a great guy to deal with. Great prices. 
really good uh, sample packs are available for really good prices as well what I'm doing here is I've got 0.5 millimeter uh, fiber optics I've drilled all the holes and those are just about 0.5 millimeter and you'll notice that it's sticking in there and the reason for that is that uh, what you do is called blooming it'll take you a few tries to get it right but essentially what you do is you get the that's a little too much so do that over a little bit of heat We'll bloom out the end and give it a little bit of a ridge and then you can use that as a catch to hold the fiber optic in place it can be a delicate process you don't want to tug too much at all if at all you want to make sure it's attached of course and it's going to stay but So that's definitely not bloomed enough. Too close and the stuff catches on fire. So that's no good. However, let's see if that will act as a stop in this case. And it does. So good enough. So I want my central LED to uh, line up somewhere in here, probably just on top of the captain's yacht. So I want to cut these all to just about the same length. And then they'll simply be attached with a uh, cool white 5mm straw hat LED. I should stop using a lighter and get one of these little candle guys here. Consistent heat like a uh, candle makes this a much better operation overall. You'll be glad. Alright, so this is the shortest length of fiber optics here. So this one determines where the LEDs go. And it's going to be right on this central peg right here. The top doesn't need it, so that is where the LED will set. And it looks like, yeah, it'll definitely be a tight fit. Let's do it this way. We'll get all the lengths. So no, I definitely need a longer length for this front one. That's no good. So on the bottom here are two obvious places. There's one that happens to be right in the middle of one of the screw holes for uh, this plastic holder, whatever it was. So I drilled straight through there. And then way back here, there's even a circle mark already on the inside of the uh, hull piece for the fiber optics to go there. So now I'm just gonna go and cut myself a foot or so and we'll move along. Just took the red Sharpie to the end of this fiber optic. 
so that it will glow red. I'm thinking I should even go larger than a 0.5 millimeter. That's not very uh, large or obvious, really. Oh, looks like I pulled it all the way through. Let's try that again. One millimeter might look nicer on this. Or at least more distinct. So as long as I'm careful, I'll be able to keep that outside of there. What I'm thinking I'd like to do is simply glue this to uh, one of these LEDs here. But I really don't know how uh, well the LED is going to react to it. Nor that the fiber optic will stay in place long enough for something like white glue to uh, hold it down in place. Now there's no chance of that happening. Let's risk just a little dot of CA. And then we'll freeze that into place. And it does show up as red, but it's not as red as it could be. Which means it'll need a red LED. There is call for a white down here, but I don't know if I feel like lighting up a whole nother cool LED just for that one. But what the heck, I may as well. I'm going to blob some glue in here so uh, that fiber optic will stay. So yes, theoretically you can use a sharpie or a paint on a fiber optic to achieve a different color. Use a white as a source and get whatever you want out at the other end. However, I think that after seeing this experiment that you really need to... Uh, do it right and get an individual LED for everything. Yep, so one millimeter is what I gouged out of here. So if I've got the red LED for that, I'll need a red LED over here for this, which means I'll need to cut that to about this length here. I'll bloom up one end 